Okay. All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Coach Banster for uh, giving me an opportunity to talk to you coaches today about something I'm passionate about, which is uh, which is about running the football. And um, I am uh, coming to you from a small little community in southwestern Michigan, Paw Paw High School. We're kind of close to Kalamazoo. My contact information, of course, is on that first slide or the slide you're looking at. And what I want to talk to you today about is about adding a single wing package to um, to the wing team. So I'm going to go ahead and get started in doing that. A little bit of background about myself. Again, my name is Matt Stevens. I have been coaching now for 30 years uh, in high school athletics. I've had stops almost all in southwestern Michigan area. Uh, Climax, Scotts, Vicksburg, Ionia, Bangor, Matawan, and Pawpaw, if you know where those places are at. Um, I have coached at all different levels, and mostly I have been a in the offensive side of the ball. I, I, I've done most of my work offensive coordinating, and uh, because of that, I have been exposed to uh, many different offensive systems. So working under different coaches, I've been exposed to uh, spread sets and veer sets and uh, wing sets, double wing sets, um, some Delaware wing tee, which, uh, you don't get every day anymore. And, um, uh, so that's, that is, uh, having that experience has allowed me to kind of really develop what I believe in and what I, what I like. And, and so, um, when I, when I started coaching, uh, as a head coach, which was, um, actually in Bangor, um, I had, you know, a little repertoire of different things that I wanted to do. And so I want to go ahead and chat with you a little bit about, um, about what we do now, which is, uh, which is tee football, uh, but mostly I want to talk to you about how we've taken our tee and have expanded it into the single wing. So the first little present part of the presentation, we'll talk about uh, a little, just a little bit about what we do. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is kind of talk to you about how we've installed some of the single wing concepts. This, uh, presentation is not uh the type of presentation that is going to get really down to the nitty-gritty it's not i'm not going to talk tremendously about blocking schemes or i'm going to be talking about how we run one play or you know really minute details but what we are going to do is i'm going to talk to the people that are maybe running the t running running power t maybe wing t and they want to maybe expand their program or expand their offense a little bit and uh, looking at the single wing as maybe an opportunity to go ahead and do that. I also want to let you know that we have not been doing this very long. Um, I got interested in the single wing about two years ago, um, and I did about six months of research before we even implemented it. And we did not run single wing football at all until 2019, so just this last year. So the clips and the shots that you're going to see today are really just us doing this for one year and like anything else when you do something for one year you're probably not very good at it and so I am not an expert but I feel like uh, I do have some knowledge of of saying all right let's go ahead and, and take something and, and and put it in as a package so uh let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what I do all right so this is um if you come and play us at Pawpaw or see our film, this is what you're going to see us in most of the time. Uh, we run uh, base T formation and nothing special here. We do about foot splits. Uh, you know, our, uh, sometimes we go down to foot to foot, but uh, this is the kind of football that is ground and pound and black and blue. And a lot of people uh, don't like it. Uh, matter of fact, I've had a lot of community members just tell me that this offensive system is is terrible to watch. But uh, it's what we do and what we've come come to become used to at Paw Paw. So, um, as far as the T, uh, when did I start doing it and why? I've already mentioned I've I've, co I've coached in multiple systems. Um, the the reason I kind of went to the T is because um, I couldn't stop it. And when I was a uh, early young head coach, I started running <clears throat> so more of a spread set. I was running a lot of jet sweeps and real spread open sets, shotgun formations. And we would run up against these T teams and, and give us fits because number one, we couldn't find the ball. Uh, number two, we, we, you know, they'd get four yards at a time and then they'd break a trap for 60 yards up the middle. And, uh, I didn't know how to stop the darn stuff. And so I thought to myself, well, if, if I can't stop it, it might be a really good reason to maybe start to look at it. So I started to research the T, uh, put it in in 2009 uh, 
at the school, uh, I was coaching at Matawan High School, and it's been really successful to that point. But I literally, and I'll mention this probably twice, I, I literally had no experience running T football at all. So, you know, what you're seeing in front of you is kind of what I've developed the idea of why we like to run T. Um, it's, it, you know, we don't feel like it equalizes speed and uh, it makes defenses play to assignment football. Uh, I think T football really defeats undisciplined athletes. Uh, it's very difficult for your opponents to simulate. Uh, you know, they got one week, week to prepare for T football, then they're going to have a hard time. Um, deceptive, you know, we're hide the ball type of offense. Uh, figured if, if you, if you don't know where it's going, you're going to have a problem. If you can't find the ball, uh, it's very ball controlling. It's very psychologically frustrating. Um, for defense coordinators and players and um and ultimately and i guess maybe one of the, the biggest things here is i think that t football really implements a a, a a physicality you know you have a lot of different schemes that maybe don't don't talk about just getting off the ball and getting into people and i think t football definitely does that and so i think that's a good thing for for football in general just telling young kids, Hey, let's get going and let's get moving. So the reason I, I talk about this is because when we went to the sing, when we decided to put in the single wing package, um, we felt like the single wing package really implemented all these things as well. Um, you know, we would be able to get into more of a shotgun looking set, but be able to do all these different things. So, um, we will go ahead. I'm going to jump ahead of it a little bit. I am going to, um, I'm going to skip over this page. Uh, this is basically talking more about T football. So uh, I put this presentation together for another clinic. So I'm going to kind of jump over the, jump over this a little bit. Um, this is some of the things that we will do with our T is some different formations that we would do uh, prior to 2000 and um, 2019. We, we would do these formations quite often. And out of the T, uh, here's what we're doing. Uh, this is our base base stuff. We, we're going to run traps. We're going to run bellies. We're going to run powers inside and B gap and outside and, and C gap. Uh, we're going to run counters and we're going to run keeps. And so this is, you know, without going into play calls or how we do things, this is basically what we're doing. And I show this slide again because I want to point out the fact that when we get into the single wing here, uh, we felt like, the, the the gaps that you can attack um you can in in t football can very easily be attacked in, in single wing so um when we decided to add the single wing we uh we did it because number one we felt like it was going to be easy um we you know we looked at it and we said you know this this, this offense itself complements itself so much to what we already do and we feel like it's easy for our kids to understand and it's easy to implement and so anytime that you want to put anything into to any offense i think you have to sit back and say hey you know, how easy it is it for our kids and we felt like the single wing was one of those things that was going to be very understandable um, number two the single wing complements the wing tee very well and I think you'll see that as we go through. Um, three, I think that it gives us an open set. Uh, it allows us to be um, it allows us to be a little bit less predictable with the uh, the pass, especially, and um, allowed us to be able to still be able to run our power game. And I think that's one of the things that you get a lot of criticism with with running T football is the fact of well you know you don't you don't have a split end or you don't have wideouts as much or you know you're just so predictable of running the football and this uh, the single wing I think allows you to be able to have a little bit more of those open set looks. Um, number four, um, the fourth thing we put the single one partly because not only did I know it would work with our system, but also because our league doesn't do it. And when you can, can do something that your league doesn't do, uh, I think you gain advantage. Um, and so we looked at this the package in, in 2018 and, and we said, Hey, uh, nobody in, in the league that we run is, is doing this. So. So let's go ahead and let's let's implement this. Let's go ahead and, and have some fun with it. And then the last thing is we found as we started running the single wing, 
it was real fun. Um, our kids loved it. Um, they, they loved the idea of, of getting into a shotgun look. They loved the idea of having some spin and misdirection. And so uh, as we have done it this past season, they have just really enjoyed the single wing and they're pretty excited about it. Now, um, the single wing itself. All right, so if you are uh, a team sitting out there and thinking, hey, you know, <clears throat> I might be wanting to put this package in, maybe you see this, this presentation and it, it interests you like it did me, uh, this is what I would tell you the keys to installation would be. Uh, number one, you want to do your homework. Uh, we felt that if we were going to be doing a, a, a new package, uh, I don't like to do anything without really understanding the, understanding the package. And so, um, you know, I talk to people, clinic up, uh, you know, find people that, that run this stuff and go ahead and spend some time with them. So that, that was really important to us. Uh, the second thing is you got to find time to practice it. Um, we took our, we took our summer camp, um, in 2018 and, and we normally would take our summer camp and really just freshen up on our base offense. Well, in 2019, we sat back and said, listen, if we're going to put in some single wings uh, concepts, uh, we, we need a lot of time to do it. So we took our entire week of camp and just told the kids, we're not doing anything that we normally do. We're going to be going ahead and we're going to be putting in this new, this new stuff. And so we, we spent uh, a good five days in the summertime before we ever hit um, regular mandatory practice and said, let's go ahead and let's install this system. Um, we wanted to start with, with baby steps. Uh, for us, the single wing is a package. It's not a, our, it's not our offense. Uh, so we felt like going into our first year, we wanted to just have a few, a few plays. Our goal was to go into our first game, uh, with, with four plays. We wanted to be able to run a, a sweep. We wanted to be able to run power. We wanted to be able to run a counter and, and we wanted to be able to throw one pass off 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 the package now as the year went on and you know our, our season progressed we were able to add stuff um, but you know that was our early goal just do one thing do do just a couple things very very well and make sure that we're doing them correctly uh, the fourth thing is is don't change your verbiage you know as much as possible keep your terminology as close to normal as you can get it um, because of that we had we went away with we, we got away from maybe some of the things that like traditional single wing clinic guys talk about, but we, uh, we talked about, you know, how do we call these things and what do we say? And so whatever you do, keep your verbiage is, is clean and as, as close to possible as um, you normally run your offensive system. And then um, the, the fifth thing, and this is a big single wing thing is flip your line. Uh, we felt in our T uh, we would never flip our tackles. We would never flip our guards around. We would just go ahead and line up and we don't have a, a strong side or a quick side offensive scheme. And in this particular package, uh, we do, uh, when we start talking uh, single wing to our kids, uh, our kids understand that they, they are going to flip around and they're going to move different sides. So we felt like that uh, makes it easier for them, gives them less stuff to learn. All right, next slide. All right, base formation or single wing, this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is that uh, probably that our tackles are gonna be on the same side. So when we go to a single wing set, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our tackles. We have an outside tackle, we have an inside tackle. And so depending on what they do, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna flip sides. Now our single wing uh, strength to, to, the, to the left is what we call west. We're gonna go ahead and call it west and east. And so my outside tackle is gonna always be on the outside depending on what formation we're in. Um, we are gonna take our fullback and we're gonna take our fullback and we're gonna put them right here in this blocking back position. Uh, we tell the blocking back um, to play one yard off the uh, one yard, roughly one yard off the football and he's gonna line somewhere in between A and B gap. And we put him in a two point stance. A lot of guys will put him in a three point, but, but we like to put him in a two point stance. The, uh, the halfbacks that we have in our T set, um, we change their names a little bit. Uh, we, we, we bring our halfback over here to the wing. Uh, and so he's, you know, our, our 
one of our halfbacks goes to wing, one of our halfback goes to halfback right here. And the quarterback and a halfback, sorry, I switched slides on you there. The quarterback and a halfback are going to go ahead and they are going to split their crotches uh, right down the middle of the outs or the outside legs of the center. So they are either one of the either one of the halfbacks uh, or the quarterback and the halfback can get the snap depending on the play. And what we do is we just teach our center to snap the ball right in between there, right in the middle of the, of the two players. We're going to go ahead and take our tight end. And uh, one of the guy, one of the tight ends, our best block tight end is going to stay in the block. And then we're going to take our other, our t- other tight end and we're going to have him split out uh, as a split end. Now his default split is going to be about four yards and that'll vary depending on what we're doing. But uh, that's basically our, our, uh, our West set. Now, looking at the um, plays we're going to run out of west and east, um, when we started off, uh, this is basically our call sheet. Uh, We want to be able to run a sweep. We want to be able to go off tackle because those are things that we would normally do on our T package. Uh, We want to be able to run trap, um, and we want to be able to run counter. Uh, we want to be able to run, be able to run a reverse, which is a little wider than our counter play, and then we want to be able to run belly. And and these are basically the plays that we would be able to to say, you know, in our normal T package, this is our base running running attack. And so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about sweep, and uh, go ahead and end uh, end our presentation talking about counter. So I don't get into passing here, but um, definitely if if that's something that interests you, make sure that you. Give me a call and contact me. All right. Um, this is our East pack, our East uh, formation. Uh, and you can see that we just have our formation flipped to the other side. Again, we have our quick side of the line, which is going to be our weak side. And we're going to have our strong side of the line, uh, which is always going to be, you know, uh, loaded, loaded heavy. Now, as far as terminology, I take a second to talk about terminology. Um, one of the things that we decided to do um, both in, in, in calling this offense and just making it under, more understandable for our kids is we wanted to, to use numbers uh, for running anything strong side. So if we're running east, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use numbers if we want to run to the offensive right. So East eight, for example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run out here into the eight gap. Um, if we're going to run six, we're going to be running our power. Uh, and then we just keep going inside. If we want to run belly, it's going to be a four uh, to the strong side. If we want to run trap, it's going to be a two. We're going to use a two call. Now, if we want to run weak, um, this was a little different than our normal offensive package and our normal sets. If we want to run anything weak side, we decided it was going to be more uh, understandable for our kids to use words. So we decided, well, okay, if we're going to run weak side over here and we want to hit D gap weak side, uh, that's going to be our reverse. And if we want to hit um, uh, B gap weak side, that's either going to be our counter or it's going to be our belly. So uh, if we want to hit trap weak side, uh, we would use the word trap. Um, we don't actually run a, a trap at one. Uh, some some single guys, single wing guys are going to go ahead and they're going to hit that weak side trap, but that's not something that we did this particular year. So as I talk through some of this terminology, that's how we're calling things. And hopefully that uh, makes it a little bit more understandable to, 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 uh, to, to follow along. All right, let's go ahead and get into the, the, the base run. I want to go ahead and talk about those, uh, those base plays that we put back in uh, in early camp of, of 2019. And so uh, the first thing we wanted to start with, when we want to start with sweep. And what we're going to do, you've got an east formation here. What we want to do with, with our sweep is, number one, we're going to overload a side. Um, we're going to go ahead we're going to make sure that we have to set this edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our outside tackle and we're going to take our wing back and we're going to make sure that those two guys are taking care of the edge player. So this is drawn up against the forefront. Uh, obviously we get different kinds of looks. We get, you know, fifties and, and we've got some sixties last year. We sort of surprised the league with what we were do- that we were doing this. So I'm assuring that they will scheme us up a little bit next year differently. 
but we're going to go ahead and we're going to double team this edge player. We're going to make sure we control him. And then what we will do is we're going to take our strong safety. He plays big part, big part of our sleep, a sweet play. Uh, we tell him to lock the box. So he's going to come off the ball and he's going to take about a step, two steps, and he's going to go ahead and he's going to come in here and he's going to lock the box. So we are assigning him to, now, we don't really tell him go to linebacker. Uh, we tell him, hey, who's who's the outside threat or the you know the, the that that linebacker or that strong safety, the next guy that's at the set level two, that you're going to go ahead and you're going to go ahead and, and and leverage him. So he's he plays a real big part in making the sweep work for us. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull our strong our strong side guard. Uh, typically, this is our best pulling guard. If we take a guard, you, you get you know a mismatch of different type of athletes. We want the strong guard to be to be fast, and we want him to probably your he's going to be your best puller. And he's going to come around the edge. And what we tell him to do is we want to tell him to to find that find that double team, come around that double team, and then go ahead and and, and work the alley inside out. So he's typically taking on a, a strong safety or a free safety of some type is, is where he's kind of running to. Um, we're going to then take our play side blocking back. And again, this would be our normally our fullback in a wing tee. Um, now we bring in a bruiser here. Uh, this particular blocking back isn't the kind of fullback that's going to be your, your small, shifty, uh, fullback that sometimes you get in T sets. This particular, uh, this is this is the guy that's going to knock you on your can. So our blocking back, uh, you're going to see him on film. He's he's kind of the guy. He's 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 the the back that you don't want to hold pads on in practice, and he's going to knock you on your can. So um, he'll come around, and what we tell him to do is we want him to block force. So he's coming off that double team. He he's going to beat the strong guard, and he's going to a lot of times he ends up kicking out the force player and we actually run our sweep to the inside, but we're actually telling him to try to log and try to find the force and, and work the force player in. Um, but don't work too hard at it. If you can knock him out, go ahead and knock him out. Now our quarterback, um, will then go lateral uh, on a snap of the football and we tell him you got corner. So we assign him to corner play and he's heading to corner right away. And our halfback who gets the ball, he's going to take that snap uh, on, on, you know, on the first step, second step, he's going to go lateral and he's going to look for that, that uh, he's going to basically follow the butt of the blocking back and he's going to look to either go around or cut in. So that's our sweet play. Uh, I'm going to show it to you on film here. So uh, hopefully this film, oh, our, here's our rules. Uh, so you guys can take a look at the rules on sweeps. Um, I won't spend a lot of time re going over everything, but you can go back and look at this. And so this is going to be our, um, we're going to start off playing a couple sweet plays. Hopefully this film goes pretty well. All right. So this is going to be, this first play is going to be an East eight. And uh, our blocking back, you're going to see some two point stance. Uh, you're going to see our wing here come inside. What they're going to do is they're going to try to double team right in this this player right here. This is our force player on the edge. So our blocking back should go to the edge player. He's trying to log him in, but doesn't necessarily uh, always have to do that. He's looking at edge. Nice little run. Force player actually wasn't even there by the time we got there. You'll see a couple slides of these. All right, now this particular play again, we're East eight. Um, <laughs> these aren't all the best plays. We do a really nice job here. Uh, and then we fumble the football in the end zone, which is not the way you want to finish a play to get a, a team we're playing gets a turnover. But you're gonna see our, our on this particular play, you're gonna see our, our split end Okay, our X receiver, you're going to see him come inside. You're going to see him lock the box. So comes around. He actually missed the linebacker, but you can see how, how, how he's trying to get work himself to the inside. And we fumble the ball, and the team gets a turnover, and we don't score. 
All right. Uh, now this particular um, is a little different adjustment that we do um, off of our A play. Uh, typically we want our split end to come inside and work to this linebacker right here. Again, we tell them to lock the box. If we get a, a really good player uh, that's threatening the, the D gap uh, right here, uh, player I think is wearing number 22 or 26, um, sometimes we'll run what we call a vice. So this would be a uh, this would be an eight vice call for us. And if we have an eight vice call, what we tell our split end to do is to block that man and the wing is supposed to block that man too. So we get a double team on, on a force player here. The blocking back understands the force player is going to already be blocked, so he's looking for next guy. And the key here is your outside tackle has got to go solo on his man. But that's an eight vice call, uh, just a little different adjustment to it. So you see the double team. Player makes a nice play, still gets the outside, but we get a we get around him. Uh, played a really good team here. This is uh, these are two nine uh, two, two eight no teams going at it. Um, and so, um, again, I think we vice this one. No, nope, we don't. Got a nice shot there of the pulling guards. Running back's pretty patient. Finishes the play nice. Couple more here. That particular play is a pretty good shot of our, 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 our split end, our X receiver coming in and locking the box. Let's see that right here. He comes inside. He's looking for number nine right here. He ends up taking him inside. Show you one more of the sweep here. That's a good shot of us going inside the, the force player and making a nice gain. All right, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so next play I want to show you is power. Um, now for us, we call um, our power East six or West five. So again, uh, here's a picture of us in the East, or this diagram is showing us East formation. Now, this is where in the presentation, I'm not gonna go into all the line calls and all the different ways to run power. I'm just gonna kind of talk through the, you know, the base, the base play. What we're looking to do with power is we wanna go ahead and have our offensive line on strong side, really gap down inside blocking. So, our, our outside tackle, uh, our inside tackle, our guard, you can see they're all railroading uh, to the inside blocking. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to have our blocking back kick the edge player, uh, the last man on the line of scrimmage, uh, we're trying to kick him out. So it's down, down, down and kick is, is the ideal scheme on power for us. Now, there are times when defenses take this away. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to spill, they'll try to spill, or they'll try to load the box with, with a lot of guys. Uh, we get a lot of schemes a lot of times where the defensive end plays head up over the top and you bring a strong save to your line, side linebacker right on the edge there. So there's certain things that we do sometimes have to change and we have some different ways that we block power. Again, I'm not going to go into all those different techniques. Uh, there's a lot of clinic stuff on that. Uh, and if, if that's something that really, really interests you, you know, give me a call. But um, here what we're doing is we're telling our, our linemen, again, down block. Uh, we want our blocking back to kick out. And then what we're going to want to do is as we get C-gap opened up, is we want our quick guard, uh, he's going to pull around, and our, our quarterback on power, takes a lateral step and what he wants to do is he wants to meet he wants to meet that guard in the hole hip to hip and so we're sending two through c gap and we want to go ahead and work inside out on the blocking team now our edge players our wing backs uh, they are heading outside uh, in this particular play uh, the wing back is going to go out to free safety 
And then the strong safety or the split end again, we're having him come inside again and lock the box as well. So we kind of leave this guard untouched or this corner, sorry, this, this corner untouched um, unless he becomes a distraction. So, uh, and lastly, our backside uh, tight end, we, t we talk about ARC blocks. Um, an ARC block for us is, uh, is an acronym that stands for um, A gap reach center. So on this backside blockers, anytime we pull the guard, we are always telling the next offensive lineman down. In this case, it's the tight end. We're always saying, hey, arc off and make sure you reach a gap and then work your way to the funnel. So this is our power play. And um, here's our rules on that. And again, it, depending on how the defensive lines up, we'll probably make some different line calls to block that differently. But uh, here's a few uh, examples of power here. So, um, okay, I'll go back. All right, this first clip is kind of mucked up. Uh, you're going to see we're playing a really good team here. This is uh, we're playing for the re uh, the, the district championship game uh, this past fall. So this team is um, I mean, this is a uh, week. This is week uh, ten uh, for us, and. What you're going to see here is uh, you're going to see our outside tackle goes inside to the inside hat here. 56, who was their their best defensive lineman. Um, my blocking back comes off and, and hits him. His goal is to kick him out. And you're going to see that he gets in the right position, but he doesn't move him very far. And so we are patient. We pick up about six or six yards on his play. But you're going to see the blocking back come out, hits force, and there's a little tiny seam, little tiny window there for a minute. And we were able to power our way for six, seven yards. Uh, same team, first couple of clips, you're going to see power. This is West Five. I'm sorry. It's, all right, let me go back on this. Uh, one of the little wrinkles we do here is this is a line shift. So we start up in West and we shift over to East. And so we're going to be running six right here and again. Block that a little differently. Um, you're going to see our outside, our outside tackle in this play. He does not go inside. He kicks out. He actually got stood up a little bit, but uh, luckily we bounced it a little hole, a hole wider. As actually was end up being a nice run, but it wasn't very good blocking. Get another e six. We totally missed the we totally missed the player here. Um, but uh, we opened up the inside hole pretty well. Blocking back went to the wrong guy. You can see sometimes it just ends up being kind of a mush. And this is probably the best example of uh, the best example that we have of uh, of our of our six play. Uh, you're going to see we do a nice job here. If you watch the quarterback and you watch the quick guard uh, number 66 here, they're going to come around and they're going to meet in the hole. So the outside tackle is going to wash our man in. Our blocking back is going to kick out here force. Here's our force player. And you're going to see that they do a nice job of creating hole, but really watch the quarterback and quick guard get into the hole here. Try to pause it at the right time. And you're going to see that they're sitting there in together uh, hip to hip. And that's really what we want it to look like. Our outside tackles washed a man to the inside. And we've we've taken care of the edge player with our blocking back, and uh, end up making a nice gain here. All right, so that's our power play. Um, now trap. Uh, any wing T team wants to be able to run trap. Uh, it's going to be part of their bread and butter. It's probably the first play they practice all year. And honestly, we didn't envision running a lot of trap out of single wing when we first started doing this. And as the season progressed, we realized that, man, we could run trap really, really simple out of this, this package and cause a lot of deception because we can make our trap look like sweep. And so what we did on trap is we didn't want to mess around with spins or we didn't want to mess around with a lot of deception here. We just wanted to catch the ball and go. So typically on our trap, you know, we try to hide the ball and, and here we just said, catch it and, and run forward. So what we're doing on trap is we're making it, uh, the, the half, the quarterback, the blocking back, 
the wing back, the free safety, or the the the, the split receiver, the split end. Uh, they're they're all doing what they would normally do on on sweep. So uh, split end's going to come in, lock the box. Wing back's going to come inside a linebacker. Um, we're going to go ahead and follow our trap rules, which is the first man past the center is the man we want to trap. And so everybody's going to railroad inside, avoid, go to second level. We're going to bring that quick guard, pull them a little flatter, and we're going to get our trap call. We're going to get our trap lock. And our quarterback, what we found with our quarterback is because he's going so hard to the outside that it really, really, really distracts second level players. And if they take a step, uh, this opens up very well. And so trap became a tremendous compliment to, uh, to our package. And we're like, man, this, you know, this is, this is a great play. So with our trap play, uh, this is, this has been an example of East two. And for our linemen's purposes, we actually kept terminology that we would normally keep with our normal offense. Uh, so we, we normally call this uh, East 32 trap, but, um, uh, let's go ahead and hit a play of that. Now we did not run this too many times. We didn't start running this until the until the middle of the season. This is actually this first. I'm going to show you just two clips of this. Uh, this is a uh, week seven. I think this is about the first time we actually ran trap. Week six, week seven, somewhere in there. And you're going to see our quarterback uh, go out like it's sweep. You're going to see our blocking back leave like it's a sweep as well. Uh, and you're going to go ahead and see the quick guard come inside here and trap. So uh, really nice compliment, just catches and goes. And we did not run that play very much last year, but we are planning on running that one uh, quite a bit. This is a second play. We don't get as many yards on trap here, but uh, we're playing a team that's really, really good here. This is uh, – uh, defensively playing a really stout team. They were eight, no coming into our game. So we don't pick up, I think we pick up four yards here on trap, but the hole itself was wide open. He just needed to cut it back. All right. So that is our, that is our trap play. This is a different formation. We run trap out of a different formation here, but that's not really single wing stuff. All right, let's move on and get to the last stuff here. So our last play I want to talk to you about is counter. Um, we went in, like I said, the, the, the three running plays we wanted to implement early on, sweep, power, counter, and then expanded from there. So our counter play is going to be, uh, it's going to look like sweep. So we want to go ahead and our, um, our, our halfback is going to catch the ball and he's going to push hard to the eight gap or if we're in West, he'd push hard to nine. And what we're going to do on counter is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull three. So what we, a lot of times on counter plays, you know, you get two, two people pulling and what intrigued me about this particular package, this single wing allows you to be able to pull three. So you're going to have your strong guard uh, is going to pull uh, he'll be the first player down the line of scrimmage, and you're going to go ahead and tell him to punch out edge player. Our blocking back, he will come flat down the line, and he's going to be the next guy. So um, different different people do this differently, but we tell our guy is you're going to read the butt of the pulling guard. Uh, he's going to kick out or log. You're going to follow his butt into the hole and you're gonna look inside out. So we're telling this blocking back, most likely you're gonna hit play side linebacker. Um, you know, you come in, you come in the hole, look inside, play side linebacker should be the first player there. And that's your man you wanna get. If nobody's there, work inside out. Now our outside tackle is going to also pull in this play. And the, you know, he loves this play because Tackles don't pull very often. And so we're going to be pulling our outside tackle. He'll come flat down the line of scrimmage, and we just tell him, clean up the wash. What we want to tell our guys is, is we want to tell them to be butt readers. So our blocking back comes down. He's reading the butt of the strong guard. Um, our outside tackle comes down. He's reading the butt cheek of the, of the blocking back. 
and then the wing back is coming. He'll take a bucket step. He's going to take an inside handoff off the halfback, and then he's going to become a butt reader too, finding the hole. Now the quarterback here, he, instead of going hard to the outside, he's going to go ahead and he's got to fill for that pulling tackle. So he takes one lateral step just to, just to avoid the blocking back, and he goes right in here, and he pops, he pops whatever's in this hole. So that is our counter. And you'll see this on film. I think I have three or four of them, but you'll also see a couple of reverse plays. Now, if we were in reverse, I don't have the blocking rules here, but if we were in reverse, what we're going to do is we're going to run this a hole wider. So uh, I'll try to point that on the film, uh, a couple of reverses, but our reverse is intended to hit a little wider in, 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 uh, in D gap. All right. So here is our first counter. You're going to see us. Uh, handoff goes to the halfback. You're going to see the wing back coming back. The outside tackle is pulling. Your blocking back is pulling and comes inside handoff, finds the gap, makes a nice play. This is a lot of times those home run plays, uh, especially if teams, especially if you get that sweep and power going. Now, again, we call this East counter. You're going to see this guy spill and running back sees an inside vision and it makes a nice play around the edge. There's East again, East counter, about six yard gain. Pretty good pickup, uh, uh, especially against this team. That's a, that's a great, a great look at taking care of the edge player tight end comes in, takes care of the edge player and you're going to see the blocking back come in here and take care of force. Do a nice job of opening up the hole here. There's our blocking. That's actually, that's a strong guard right here coming around. That's the kick out. This is our outside tackle coming around. And again, they do a nice job of picking up the hole. This was early in the season. It was one of the early games. Uh, we had not run counter very much. And again, that's a good look at it. Seeing three guys coming around. Uh, would have liked to see our strong guard here not chase the player. You're going to see him. He's going to chase. He'll come down the line of scrimmage. He's going to chase this player right here which we, he shouldn't have done, but our offensive tackle didn't even block anybody. We've got a couple of examples of reverse coming up here. All right, this first one here, this play right here is actually a reverse. Uh, this is a spin. This is a spin play. This is a spin reverse. And we're supposed to bust that wider. Uh, we're trying to get on reverse. We're trying to get a hole wider. And I think I got one more play for you here to see. And this, this next one should be reverse as well. All right, now this is a reverse. This is actually not, this is east reverse, not east counter. Difference in this play, we're trying to run it wider. Um, now what we do on reverse is my tight end actually comes blocks down inside, he down blocks, and my guard, my quick guard is gonna go ahead and he's gonna loop and log. Um, and what that does is it puts a neck, it puts another guy on the edge. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that guy to log to the to the to the um, his player to the inside, and we're trying to bring an extra guy around the edge. So we actually end up, if you think about it, we're kind of pulling four guys around the outside. Now the other difference in reverse is this halfback, this wing back, instead of taking an inside handoff, he's going to take an outside handoff. 
And normally we run this in spin. Um, and so you're going to see the quarterback catch this in spin. And we fake sweep, we come back with the reverse. And that's a, probably as good as it gets as far as uh, the reverse, you know, as far as blocking it. All right. Um, there's one more reverse. Okay, um, so that's our film. Uh, that is, uh, that's the three plays I kind of wanted to show you. And um, as far as information, um, here are some people that you can kind of get a hold of if you have some interest in, in implementing some of this single wing stuff. Uh, the, the guru, I think in the country, the clinic master of the country is a guy by the name of Rick Darlington. Uh, Rick Darlington is a head coach at Enterprise High School in uh, enterprise city alabama and he is a kind of guy that he you know he could talk all day about about single wing and if you're really interested in i would i would go ahead and research his stuff in glazier clinics vaults and and try to get in touch with him because he's a uh, very friendly and very willing to share information on single wing a um, couple guys in michigan Cody Francis, uh, Hopkins High School, Jeff Score for uh, Coldwater High School. These are guys that I went to when I was first starting to try to figure stuff out. Um, definitely willing to to give you uh, uh, help and information, and then uh, of course give me a call if it's something that uh, that, that that interests you. Uh, again, my my information. Um, I got my Twitter handle down there, Redskin Nation Football at Tupaw Football, and then. Um, you can get a hold of me, but any one of those uh, contacts to the right. So hopefully uh, uh, this uh, presentation uh, might have brought you a little interest on, on how we took uh, our tea and, and added some spread stuff to it. And if you're interested in it, feel free to give me a call. I'd be willing to share any information that I have with you. If you want to talk about how we block particular plays, I know I didn't get into that very much today, but uh, I'd be happy to to go through that stuff with you and also passing game uh which i didn't even get into at all um what the what the single wing allowed us to be able to do is is really become uh, more versatile with with drop back passing and um different types of play action passing by putting our quarterback in a, in a, in a shotgun look so anyways again i appreciate the time and uh have a good uh, have a good uh, summer. Uh, I know it's been kind of crazy with COVID nineteen and quarantine, but uh, hopefully that stuff will all calm down and we'll have ourselves a season this fall. Thanks very much.